React is the most popular JavaScript library for building user interfaces. And it provides a set of lifecycle methods that allow us to interact with our components at different stages. The components go through three phases during the lifecycle. The first one is mounting phase. In the mounting phase, a component is being created and inserted into the DOM for the first time. Next we have the update phase, which is triggered when a component's state or props changes. And the last phase is unmount phase, which is triggered when a component is removed from the DOM. Class-based components were the traditional way of creating components in React. However, with the introduction of hooks in React 16, each lifecycle method has an equivalent in functional components using React hooks. Let's create a class-based component called user profile and explore all of its lifecycle hooks and then we'll see how we can use their equivalents in functional components. Let's start with the mounting phase. This is the phase where the component is created and added to the DOM. The following lifecycle methods are called during the mounting phase. Constructor. This is the method that's called when the component is created. It's the perfect place to set up your component's initial state and bind methods to the component. Next, the render method is called, which returns the JSX that represents the component in the DOM. And lastly, the component did mount method is called after the component has been added to the DOM. We use this to fetch data or set up event listeners. Here is the equivalent functional component code for the mounting phase. In functional components, we don't have a constructor method. Instead, we can use the useState hook to initialize state values and perform any setup logic that we would normally do in the constructor. The render method is replaced by simply returning the JSX markup from the functional component. And we use the useEffect hook to replace the component didMount method. We can pass an empty array as the second argument to useEffect hook to simulate the component didMount. Moving on to the update phase. This is the phase where the component's props or state changes and the component is re-rendered. The following lifecycle methods are called during the update phase. The first one is shoot component update. This method is called before the component is re-rendered. We use it to determine if the component should update or not by returning a boolean value. The render method is called next and returns the JSX that represents the updated component in the DOM. And component did update method is called after the component has been re-rendered. We use it to perform any side effects like updating DOM or fetching new data. In a functional component, we can use useEffect hook without any dependencies to replicate the behavior of component did update method. This way, it will be called after every re rendering. However, it is more common to pass a specific dependency array here because having useEffect hook without any dependencies can easily cause infinite re renders. And the equivalent of should component update can be using React Memo higher order component on export, which lets you skip re rendering a component if its props are unchanged. The unmount phase is the final phase in React lifecycle, which is triggered when a component is being removed from the DOM. This can happen when a component is removed due to parent component being removed or when the component is conditionally rendered and its condition becomes false. In this phase, the component will unmount method is called, which allows us to perform any necessary cleanup operations such as removing event listeners or cancelling network requests. 
To achieve the same in a functional component, we can use the useEffect hook with the cleanup function as follows. Instead of component will unmount, we specify a cleanup function that will be called when the component is unmounted by returning a function from the useEffect hook. You can see that the functional component looks a lot cleaner and more concise compared to the class-based one. A lot of boilerplate code is removed, making it easier to read and understand. React now promotes the use of functional components as they offer a simpler and more concise way of writing components. And all of the lifecycle hooks are available in functional components as well. It's worth mentioning that there are some other lifecycle hooks that we haven't discussed in this video, but these other hooks are less commonly used and in most cases you will use only these lifecycle hooks that we covered in this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.